Hello and welcome to Vietnam Journal, our daily English news bulletin on Netflix PTC 10. I'm Ngo speaking from Hanoi. Every day we bring you comprehensive and up-to-date information on Vietnam and following our major stories on Saturday. EU meet producers talk in Vietnam. Poland's NGOs support water, sanitation and hygiene in Vietnam. And the Singaporean diplomats love for Vietnamese history. The Union of Producers and Employers of the Meat Industry has recently launched a campaign to promote the sale of European beef and pork in Vietnam. With increasing income in Vietnam, the country's demand for meat products is expected to rise significantly. The campaign targets distributors, importers and local processors and five-star hotels in Vietnam. The Asian country is potential market for the Europe beef and pork. The current meat consumption per capita in Vietnam is still low compared to an annual average of 43 kilos per person in the Europe. The union's food production is based on stringent regulation to ensure food hygiene and quality. Vietnam is to import 100,000 tons of meat this year as local supply will fare slightly due to the diseases and a reduction in farming induced by high feed prices. Vietnam attend a conference organized by the International Coffee Organization or ICO in London from September 26 to 30th. This 107 section attracted more than 80 coffee importers and exporters worldwide. During the seminar, the delegates discussed the current situation in the world market and made forecasts on world coffee outputs in the 2011-2012 crop. ICO reported that the world's coffee exports totaled 92.5 million bags last year. Brazil is the largest coffee exporter in the world, with over 30 million bags per year, followed by Vietnam with 16 bags per year. However, the world's coffee output is forecast to decrease in the 2011 and 2012 period. The decline results from the impacts of climate change and degraded coffee areas in some countries, including Brazil, Colombia and Vietnam. And following is some other business news in brief. The Joint Stock Commercial Bank for Foreign Trade of Vietnam, or Vietcombank, decided to sell a 15 stake to Japan's Mizuho Financial Group, Inc. on Friday, September 30. Mizuho is the first and also the only foreign strategic partner of Vietcombank. Vietcombank is the biggest lender listed on Vietnam's stock market. Vietnam's coastal province of Khánh Hòa has recently approved a tourism and urban zone project invested by local Vinpearl Company. The project covers 1,497 hectares of land. Earlier, the province had allowed another local real estate firm to carry out a resort project. The city of Vietnam and the city of France have signed a cooperation agreement during a France working visit by control officers from September 24th to October 2nd. In the framework of this agreement, four partnership agreements on tourism, hospital, tertiary and primary education cooperation were inked in nice city. The Vietnamese city has been invited to participate in nice city's carnival scheduled for February 2012 and the international fair in April 2012. Environmental protection is always important to sustainable development. In Vietnam, there are many projects implemented by international non-government organizations to help local people preserve the ecological system. VTC10 had a conversation with Rita Top Daxon, country director of Poland-based SNV, about the projects of water sanitation and hygiene in Vietnam. Hello, Mr. Tom Direction, and welcome to Navy Channel VTC10. Uh, could you give us a brief introduction of the project Water Sanitation and Hygiene implemented in Vietnam? We mostly work on uh, awareness generation, demand creation actually for sanitation with uh, ethnic communities, the Hmong or the Thai and others. 
um, they have a very different sort of sense of cleanliness and hygiene and this is why till this time generally they don't see much point in basically building toilets. So we use an approach that's called um, community-led total sanitation in which you sort of shock people into awareness saying, well oh, really, I'm shamed that what I am eating actually is contaminated, yes, and actually we show people that actually, and that helps to change their behavior. Um, we do not only do that, we then also look at the supply side, because we think the market should provide different uh, uh, technologies for uh, um, people to choose from for their toilets, yeah, different mm -hmm. designs. I know this is a funny topic, but it's, it's so important. Sanitation is at the heart of health uh, in, uh, in, in any country and also in Vietnam. So, um, and at the same time we look with the government at the role of subsidy. How can that role of subsidy be more targeted so that uh, people um, and all our programs are more successful than they were in the past. Um, and we are very happy we have piloted this approach. We are doing that now in four uh, uh, provinces in Dien Bien, in Lao Cai and Lao Chao, and we're starting up in Nian An. And um, the results are really, really very encouraging. What are some of the results SNB has achieved since launching this project in Vietnam? Yes, so over the last uh, two years when we have intensified, um, we just actually did a, 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 a measurement mm -hmm. uh, which indicated that uh, we have reached so far around 30,000 people uh, uh, in, uh, um, in these three provinces and we think that by the end of the year this figure will be closer to 40-50,000 50, people um, which is what we targeted, which is what we were uh, aiming for. And the final question, what are the projects SNB is about to launch in Vietnam in the near future in terms of environment protection? Yes, well, in terms of water and sanitation, we want to help upscale this successful approach mm -hmm. to other areas together with the government. So we would hope to launch this in another 10 provinces in the coming two or three years. Um, in terms of other environmental programs, you know that uh, in the past, in, uh, as Vietnam moved from a plant economy to a market economy, there's been a lot of emphasis initially on just growth, on quantitative production numbers. Now I think everybody realizes that sustainable growth is important. So I think um, what we want to help is launch programs that help to support sustainable, environmentally sustainable production um, of food and vegetables and also aquaculture and so work with businesses to help make the, their production process more sustainable. At the same time we're looking at climate change uh, uh, adaptation programs because the effects of climate change are there and so um, we would like to work with uh, 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 communities, businesses and government to find new solutions for the current uh, challenge of climate change in Vietnam. Okay, thank you again for taking this interview with us. Vietnam's Journal, a surprise from most proposals posted on YouTube on September 24, has attracted a lot of viewers around the world. This plasma was made by a Vietnamese American young man who wanted to give his girlfriend an ultimate surprise. This clip has attracted nearly 500,000 reviews and 2,000 comments on YouTube. The video gained a lot of compliments and support from viewers. This surprising flash mob has become one of the five breaking news of KCLA, an international TV channel of Los Angeles. This couple has also been invited to the live talk of CNN, American Morning. Chiang and Nam are Vietnamese Americans living in Los Angeles. They are both students of the University of California, Los Angeles. A Vietnamese office collection called Horizon Lights of Waters will be showcased in Liu Zhao's annual water festival in China on October 3rd. The collection is designed by Ming Hang, a Vietnamese renowned fashion designer. Horizon Lies of Water collection contains 30 outfits with the aim of raising awareness of the environment and national traditional values. Outfits of the collection are made from traditional materials such as silk, brocade and handmade embroidery which are meant to convey the pure beauty of water. 
This year festival will gather nine designers from Asian countries. Each collection requires a combination of traditional and modern beauty. The show will feature catwalk performances of China's leading models along with some others from the United States and Europe. The Australian embassy in Hanoi has started accepting applications for 2011 to 2012 direct aid program or DAP projects in northern Vietnam. The deadline of application is October 28th. DAP provides grants for small-scale projects aimed at enhancing development outcomes in Vietnam disadvantaged communities. DAP funding is available to individuals, community groups, NGOs and other non-profit organizations. In 2010 and 11, the Australian Embassy supported 15 projects across 12 provinces in northern Vietnam. DAP funding is part of Australian bilateral aid for Vietnam. Overall, Australia will provide an estimated amount of 138 million Australian dollars in Office of Development Assistance to Vietnam in the 2011 and 2012 financial year. Raymond Lu, the first secretary of Singaporean embassies, has been living in Vietnam for more than two years. The diplomat has become deeply interested in Vietnam's history. Now let's go and follow him to the Museum of Vietnamese History. Raymond set aside some time from his busy schedule to visit the museum of Vietnamese history. There were so many sections showing different periods in Vietnamese long history that he did not know where to begin with. Raymond was captivated straight away by the collection of Vietnamese ancient jet here. He enjoyed the sophistication of antiques that Vietnamese people produced in the ancient time with limited tools. Raymonds were also surprised at the variety of bronze objects made in Vietnam in the old days. Things like bronze drums, bronze bells and the spares partly helped him imagine Vietnamese people's ways of life thousands of years ago. Um, I think we are, we are very similar in many ways. We have a similar culture uh, and a similar hospitality, friendly, so I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, the, the, the difference is that in, in Vietnam there's a lot of uh, respect for tradition and, and I, I find that, that that's something that we, we in Singapore want to do a little bit more of. Although Raymond's understanding of Vietnamese is limited, he still listened carefully to the tour guide's introduction to learn about Vietnamese history in depth. He watched and memorized every single detail of the object to broaden his knowledge of the Asian country. What Raymond likes to see the most is the influence of various foreign civilizations like China and India on Vietnamese culture. I, I, I want to travel to more and more places. Uh, I've, I've, been to, I've been to probably 15, 20 provinces, uh, northern Vietnam, central Vietnam, like, like what you see here, the, the Cham Museum, uh, the, the, the Cham History. So. Uh, I hope to go to more places, take more pictures, talk to more people, read more books. The experience Raymond had in the museum urged him to learn more about the past of the country. He plans to go to the Mekong Delta and Vietnam's central city of Nha Trang. Those places will offer him not only opportunities to explore history, but also beautiful landscapes with sunshine. The Singaporean diplomat's love for Vietnamese history story has wrapped up our Vietnam Journal for today. From all of us here at NetVietVTC10, thank you for watching and see you tomorrow.